I feel like I should put this disclaimer here. I am pretty new to Final Fantasy VII. I played the game a little bit when I was a kid on the PS1. Never got too far into it. Maybe after, like, you know, Midgar and all that. But that's about it in terms of my Final Fantasy VII knowledge. I finally, after three years of ups and downs, I finally finished Seven Remake last week. Incredible game in preparation for Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion. I knew I wanted to do a video on this. I knew I did not want to be left behind. Two games behind at this point following the remake uh, pathology, I guess. And um, I'm going to review these games because I just finished them. It is 7 a.m. I stayed up all night playing the PS5 version. We will talk about the Switch version. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, obviously, as I mentioned, new to Final Fantasy, I cannot directly compare this game to the PSP version. I've seen gameplay of the PSP version. It looks a lot more handheld in terms of just the way it works the way the camera moves the way the menus work it all seems a, lo a lot more truncated this obviously kind of brings it to console makes it a lot more smooth makes everything just feel a little bit more like a console game but keep in mind it's still a psp game at its core this is a weird in between of a remaster and a remake square enix has been calling it a remaster but then they started calling it more than a remaster i think it's a weird in between Closer to Remake, certainly, because they're obviously using the assets from 7 Remake. You know, the character models look completely different than they did in Crisis Core. That is Zack's model from uh, 7 Remake. That is Sephiroth. That is Cloud. You know, um, they have all the new voice actors from those games. All the environments, or at least most of the environments, seemingly, they're all just reusing assets from 7 Remake. Toned down to a minimum to get it running on Switch, which we'll talk about in just a second. So the game looks very good, just toned down. It does not look as good as 7 Remake. There's not, you know, you don't have like the super realistic, you know, skin textures on everybody. You don't have the incredible lip sync and animations and all these things. It does still feel like a budget title. Go into this game expecting it to feel like a budget title. In terms of an upgrade from the PSP version, oh yeah, <laughs> it looks incredible. But in terms of comparing it to 7 Remake, which I know a lot of people are going to do, don't expect that. Just expect upgraded PSP game. You would be pleasantly surprised because I think these game, this game actually looks very good, at least on PS5. So let's just go ahead and go over the Switch version really quick. I played it all the way through to the end on PS5. I did not play the Switch version too much. I played the first two chapters. And I have to say, I applaud Square Enix for what they did here. They sacrifice resolution over frame rate. <laughs> the frame rate in this game is good on Switch. I'm not sure if it's 30 or 60, but either way, it's locked. I did not notice any drops. I'm sure Digital Foundry will have a more concrete video, but the resolution in the Switch version and just the resolution of character models and all these things, it, it's a lot worse on the Switch version, and that's what you would expect from a portable version of this game. It is a little disappointing considering this is a PSP game, but also it's using those new uh, models and textures from 7 Remake. So you kind of have to expect some, uh, some, some things to happen there to get it running on Switch. And it's obviously just a miracle it's on Switch to begin with. This is 7 Remake uh, kind of. Well, it's, it's Final Fantasy 7 and you feel like Sony has that, that stuff locked down. So don't go into the Switch version expecting the PS5 graphics that I'm showing you throughout most of this video. I think I, I'll put up like Nintendo Switch logo if I'm showing Switch gameplay because I want that to be very clear to you all. The PS5 version is definitely, or, or Series X, I don't have the Series X version, uh, definitely the definitive version of this game. Uh, runs very nice, looks very nice, resolution's high, um, so keep that in mind. Switch version is nice, it is very nice that it exists, and I kind of want to talk about it real quick in another aspect. So, in this game, of course, PSP game, mobile game, there's a lot of short bursts you can do through the mission mode there's a ton of missions in this game you can access them from the save points you can access them from the menu and they're very quick short missions this is the one thing i think the switch version has a, a, an advantage over this game was designed for psp it is still a handheld game it still feels like a handheld game these missions can be like two, 30 seconds long <laughs> you know and i kept running into this issue where i wanted to do the main story on my tv and then take it into bed at night or something before going to sleep or or out on you know, walks or on the bus whatever and you can't really do that with the ps5 version i tried cloud streaming and the ps5 remote play does not work very well i have a, the the backbone and it just does not work very well the switch version has that advantage of being portable so you can just take it with you wherever you go do those missions while you're in bed while you're on a bus on, on your commute or whatever and then play the story stuff basically all the ni nice looking cutscenes um on your tv 
So if you're going to go over the Switch for any reason, that is definitely the reason. Because there's a ton of missions in this game. You can spend hours grinding them out. Like I said, they're like, you know, they can be 30 seconds. They can be five minutes. Most of them are pretty short, though. You can replay them. You can grind them. It is fun. I like the mission structure in this game. But let's talk about something else, and that is the voice acting. I've seen so many people talking about the voice actor for Zack in this game. I don't know his name. Um, it's the same voice actor from 7 Remake. I don't know what people expect. I, maybe I'm just... I'm in the minority here. I like Kingdom Hearts, right? And Kingdom Hearts has good but also very bad voice acting. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of campy. It, the delivery is always kind of weird and dry, but I like it. That's what this game feels like to me. This game feels like a Kingdom Hearts game. And all the, the ways that you might not like, that I do like. Um, the way Zach, it you know, is... The way the, the lines are delivered, especially. I think that's just the, the biggest thing. And I think I've seen, you know, Zach saying Gungaga. That has <laughs> become a meme on Twitter because it sounds stupid. And maybe, maybe Zack's actor is, is, his voice actor is a little worse than like Aerith or, or Tifa or Cloud or whatever. I don't really know, but it kind of has a charm to me anyway. I know that's weird. I maybe, maybe, I don't know. I like it though. Um, or maybe at the very least I'm fine with it. So don't worry about the voice actors too much. I, I've seen a lot of people complaining about that. I will say the audio quality for some reason, at least at first, I, I kind of stopped noticing it later on. I guess I got used to it, because I, I went from 7 Remake directly to this game, like, in a couple days. The voice quality, like, the sound quality of the voice acting certainly seems lower. I don't know why that would be an issue, since they obviously re-recorded new lines. They, I don't think they carried any voice lines over from the original game. I don't even know if the original game had voice acting. So, I don't know. Voice acting's weird. I've seen a lot of people complaining about Zack's voice actor. I think he sounds okay. But um, that'll be obviously be up to your interpretation. So this game follows a pretty linear path. It's not like 7 or 7 Remake where you have... Well, 7 Remake is a little bit more linear as well. But it's not open, basically. Um, pretty much everything you do is in a straight path. There are 10 chapters plus a prologue. So basically 11 chapters. And for the most part, you're just going in a straight path. I do not like the random encounters. This game has random encounters. I know. Isn't that rough? <laughs> Isn't that really rough? By halfway through the game, I was so done with the random encounters. It's so annoying when you're trying to get to the story and you have to fight Goblet number three. You're just spamming your Fiagra Blade and then you just, it just, it just is pointless. You can flee from the battle, but that's just annoying. Give us the option to turn this off or something. I don't know. And the combat is really fun. The combat in this game is very satisfying. I did look up a little bit of gameplay. I saw how they used to have like the, the, um, uh, the spells in on the PSP version, you have to like manually go over, I think using the trigger buttons to to select it. In this game, it's kind of like 7 Remake, where you have, I think as you press L1, you open up a sub-menu for all your spells, or your materia, I should say, and it just works so well. This game plays so smooth. I could see it getting a little bit repetitive if you do every mission, for sure, but that goes with any action game. Um, but I had a lot of fun just playing through the story, and it took me about, I don't know, like 11 hours just making different builds, trying out different materia, and it all played very seamlessly. Those random encounters, though, very annoying. Did not like that. I, I really don't get why a game like this would have random encounters, especially because you have the mission mode. If you want to grind and do whatever, there's the mission mode. When I'm trying to do the story, and I'm in the final area, and it's this epic, beautiful area, looks gorgeous on the PS5, <laughs> why am I doing random encounters? bro there's so much stuff going on the 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 plot is at an all-time like emotional high and i'm fighting glob lob number four i don't know maybe this is me like i'm a mod i i consider myself more modern i guess on my rpg tastes i know a lot of people like random encounters they like dragon quest i think i've moved past it i think i've very much moved past the random encounters or especially there's a there's a couple parts where you're in like a, a house um or just like an enclosed environment and there are random encounters in the damn house why it's 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 really annoying but the combat is very good so it never got i never got too pissed off basically because the combat does play so nice it is quick it is snappy and usually you're out of a, a random encounter in a couple in like you know 10 15 seconds so it's not it's not too bad but random encounters get out of here or at least give us the option to turn it off i don't know why they didn't they didn't do that 
Now, one of the key gameplay elements in a Final Fantasy Crisis Core 7 Reunion, I know it's Crisis Core 7 Reunion, Final Fantasy, or whatever the hell, the Square Enix names are weird, uh, is the DMW system. I can't remember what that stands for, but basically it's jackpot. Um, really interesting system. So basically, while you're playing, you're just constantly running the lottery. I don't even know exactly how it works, but I know it was... It seemed to be working pretty well. So you'll have all these relationships with characters. I mean, you can't really affect these as far as I can tell. Um, they're mostly just developed throughout the story. But let's take Aerith, for example. Um, if you have her and there's like an emotional high between you two, her, um, if you roll her numbers, you'll get a, a limit break. And her limit break, for example, will heal you and give you all your, your mana and your AP back. And then you have these for all these characters. You have a similar thing for summons like Bahamut and Ifrit and as well as others. Um, basically, you're just constantly randomly rolling for these things. But it doesn't feel completely random, you know? And, and it's the same thing for leveling up. You have to roll a 777 to level up. But it, it definitely doesn't feel completely random. It definitely feels paced out accordingly. You know, every few levels, you're, you're leveling up. Every few um, fights, you're getting a, a summon or, or you know halfway through a battle you're getting your limit break for for cloud for example or so, something like that you know it's hard to explain without actually just playing the game obviously i'm showing gameplay right now hopefully that does a bit better job um but it's very weird sometimes you'll get other things that don't even do limit breaks sometimes you'll just get something that makes you endure attacks better or or gives you infinite mp for a, a short period of time or ap it's very interesting certainly reminds me of a something that would be in like a kingdom hearts spinoff <laughs> um obviously you know this is no more game Definitely feels like something. I can't even. I, I haven't played Birth by Sleep in a long time. I don't know what Birth by Sleep had in it that made it a PSP game. Maybe I'm thinking of Rechained Memories, but either way, certainly feels like that a, sp a spin-off kind of mechanic. But I enjoyed it quite a bit. Never got too random. It, it it did seem pretty balanced overall. And then the last thing I want to touch on real quick before I head off here is the story. I won't be spoiling anything, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Obviously, I, I I knew some stuff about Crisis Core and Final Fantasy VII as a whole before I finished Seven Remake, and I did have Seven Remake spoiled for me. I kind of knew what changed with that. No spoilers. Whoa! <laughs> as someone who finished Seven Remake first and then played Crisis Core, um, wow, that's that's tough. The story in this game is awesome. Zack is, is an awesome character. I like Zack way more than Cloud, and I like Cloud, don't get me wrong, but Zack is such a good character. His relationship with Aerith and, and Sephiroth and, and um, Angiel and all these characters, it, so, so good. So good. <laughs> it, it makes me, it's crazy for me to think, because I was born after Final Fantasy VII came out to begin with. I was born in 2000. That y'all didn't get this story until what? 10 years later on the PSP? That's crazy to me. I can't even imagine. This is such. This feels like such an integral part of Final Fantasy VII that, honestly, you should probably play this first. Genuinely. Normally, with prequels that come out after, I, I normally say, like, oh, play the original game first, then play, pre, pre, play the prequel. No. I don't know. Am I, am I out of line saying play Crisis Core first? I, I feel like you should. Um, especially in this case, now going into uh, Rebirth and all that. Highly highly recommend playing crisis core i'll tell you right now and this may be spoilers for seven remake i don't know it depends on what you classify as a spoiler so click off if you don't want to hear this but the game is not connected it, they didn't change anything as far as i can tell for this release it's not connected to seven uh remake or rebirth as as far as i am aware it just seems to be a one-to-one -one retelling of the story um the same ending that happens in the PSP game happens in this game. So they didn't change it or adapt it in that way. So the timeline still goes this, 7, then 7 Remake, right? Um, or I guess Advent Children and Dirge of Cerberus are in there too. Seven Final Fantasy VII is a weird game with a weird timeline. So um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of gushing about the story right now. The story is fantastic. I love the characters. Zack is my boy. His relationship with Aerith is awesome to see. And I just like seeing that in the fold. So yeah, Crisis Core. Such a freaking good game. Definitely a great way to end the year. I don't think there's anything else coming out this year I really even care about. Um, and certainly in in my discussion for my, for my favorite games that came out this year as someone who never played Crisis Core. So I hope this review helps you out in deciding which version to get as well as if you should even get the game. The answer is yes. If you like Final Fantasy VII and VII Remake, you should get this game. I think it's pretty obvious. It has some issues, um, but the graphics are nice. Nice upgrade. Um, voice acting, I don't really have an issue with. And that gameplay is so... 
buttery smooth, kind of simplistic, but nice and snappy, and it's what you want from a game like this. I highly recommend this game. Cannot recommend it enough. Fantastic little piece of the Final Fantasy VII story, and I hope you enjoyed this review. With that said, I'm headed out. Peace.